Grumpy Old Geeks, a weekly talk show hosted by Brian Schulmeister and Jason DeFilippo, discussing the finer points of what went wrong on the internet and who's to blame. Welcome to Grumpy Old Geeks. I'm Jason DeFilippo. And I'm Brian Schulmeister. Brian, we got a little bit of follow-up here. Okay. I, I found this one over at Axios, and I thought it was very nice. AI's Rise generates new job title, Prompt Engineer. Who, oh, so they listened to our show from six months ago. Who'd have thought of that? <laughs> who'd have thunk it? Oh, wait, of course we did, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's a good it's a good article, though. I highly recommend uh, people who are curious about the, the new world order that is coming up <laughs> to go <laughs> check it out because uh, – yeah, it has a, a lot of uh, use cases for what it's going to be like in the future. And writing prompts is definitely going to be a thing that everybody should be up to speed on because it's not yeah. going away. Yeah. Uh, you know, appropriate to that, uh, you had sent me a YouTube link to a, a chat GPT tutorial or webinar uh, the other week. And I was like, uh, but I did finally watch it. And uh, two takeaways from it. First off, it's disturbing to be taught by what feels like 11 year olds. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But uh <laughs> Beyond that, uh, I, I just it was very interesting, and I mean, I'm sure because of because of the nature of this technology and how it's advancing so quickly, I'm sure everything that I learned is already out of date at this point. Uh, but it, yeah, it's good to keep up on this because this is the new the new deal, man. It's it's not going away. Yeah, it is the new deal for sure. And uh, the thing that I sent you is from Ship Thirty for Thirty with uh, Dicky Bush and Nicholas Cole, also there you known go. as Cole. Um, very very smart couple of guys. And a very rich couple of guys, too. Damn, <laughs> these guys are raking it in. Because Nick, Nick is one of the uh, – I, I keep calling him Nick. His name is we – we call him Cole. Uh, but uh, he is part of the Category Pirates. So that's how I got to know him. And, uh, there you go. Yeah, go check out uh, Ship 30 for 30 uh, if you well, guys want to learn how to write better online and get that uh, course that I sent Brian because it was pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, it was very interesting. Yep, these guys know what they're doing. Now, this week has seen the release of the Chat GPT and Whisper APIs. Mm -hmm. The internet is a buzz about these things because yes, they're plugging it into everything. Plug it into everything <laughs> because it this is, is the new block code. <laughs> you want funding? Yeah, get yeah, your seriously. API. Yeah, blockchain 2.0, Web 4. Mm -hmm. um, but this is actually useful, which is pretty cool. But the thing about it is, it is so dirt cheap. It is ridiculously dirt cheap. They have mm -hmm. a very big price cut from what it used to be. And I have a thread here called Introducing Chat GPT and Whisper APIs. So you can go check it out. Um, it is, like I said, it's cheap, but it makes me wish that I was a coder, sort of, again. <laughs> but not really. Not, not really. really. I'm, no. I'm cool with letting other people write the tools. I'll just use them now, now that I'm, you know, in the in the home in the home stretch, as it were. Yeah, I, I totally agree with what you're saying. Even just watching that uh, that webinar was like, ooh, I want to kind of get into this again. And then I was like, no, I don't. No, no. I know. I know. It just <laughs> reminds me of the old, you know, building the web days. This is like something Building that's new exciting. stuff. Yeah. It's new, not an exciting NFT. stuff. <laughs> it's a stupid crypto or JPEGs that you can still download, you yeah. know. Yeah. Uh, how, how those monkeys, how those bored yachts do yeah. it. <laughs> Very bored. Very mm -hmm. bored. Um and there is this mega thread from Nathan LeBenz. Uh, he's from the Cognitive Revolution uh, podcast and mm -hmm. newsletter. It's a very long read, but it's very worth it because uh, it just goes through a bunch of different things. But in, in the middle of this, he coins the term universal basic intelligence, which I thought was pretty clever, right? Mm -hmm. He calls right. it he said, free global access to a minimum set of AI services. With as good as AI is getting at everything, this would be meaningful. And it seems a rare opportunity to shape the global social contract. Okay, Nathan, I, I <laughs> don't. Slow your roll. I, I, I'd slow yeah. your roll here a little bit. Let's let's not put the cart before the horse. We don't have free global access to the internet yet. Exactly. Or food, or clothing, or clean water. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Let's start. Let's start with the human basics here. How about you use some of that universal basic intelligence and realize that this is basically for privileged folk. Yes, it is very much yeah. for privileged folk. Uh, <laughs> but the thing about it too is. Once you have, let's just let's just say we live in Star Trekian utopia here. Everybody Which, has, as access. we've seen when Picard isn't exactly utopia. No, it's not. Definitely <laughs> not. Um, and after a time here, 
if everybody is using the universal basic intelligence programs that scrape the web and, you know, the 20 plus or 30 plus years of us building the internet and building the web and putting all of those crazy websites up that this thing feeds on, Mm -hmm. once people stop creating that stuff and just using this, well, then we're going to get into universal basic ignorance because everybody is going to rely on this as a crutch. This is a trope that is, you know, from science fiction since it started, you yep. know, just go and back. And it's already happened. I mean, let, yeah, so few people have the basic knowledge to build the basic building blocks of everything that we use these days. Most we were talking about about this with uh, millennials and cell phones and, and particularly um, iPhones when they came out where everything was so easy to use and nobody had to know how to do anything anymore. Yep. We're seeing a lot of that come home to roost. Uh, so, yeah, you, I just looking at the longer term picture of this because that's what we tend to do. You know, we're, mm-hmm. we're, we're right in a 10 year time scale, but <laughs> I, I, I want to I want to I want you to cast your mind back to one of the greatest books of all time, the greatest book series of all time, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Okay. There was a time where they asked, what, what is the meaning of life, the universe, and everything? And mm-hmm. their universal basic intelligence came back with 42, which mm-hmm. nobody knows what it means. And why don't they know what it means? Because they don't know how the computer was programmed. Yes, this is a long way of saying we still don't know what the fuck these things are doing. And half the time they give us absolutely useless data. So before we can get to universal basic intelligence, let's just work on the basic intelligence part of it and not give this thing the credit that everybody thinks that it deserves. So a quick anecdote about that, because we are referring to the black box. That's that's what basically everybody calls it, with, yes. especially with AI and machine learning, when these things have trained themselves. So we don't really know how they get to the answers that they get to. Quick thing about wokeness in society right now, I I didn't think my usage of the term black box, because we're, you know, everybody's talking about it, and it's kind of an understood term, could be even vaguely considered racist. But it could, because I was referring to a colleague who happens to be African American, and his rather obtuse method of explaining anything that he does. And I said, I don't really understand what happens when things go into that guy's black box. And all of a sudden, everybody went, and I was like, Oh, come on, people. Give me a fucking break. (laughs) Oh, my God. I mean, okay, a couple couple things about the black box. One, the black box, we think about it as the airplane flight recorder, which is actually orange. But the company that made those was down the street from me in uh, Lawrence, Pennsylvania, outside of Lawrence, Pennsylvania. And the company's name was Black Box Incorporated. Sorry. That was the name of the company. Well, they're racist. Sorry. They have to be canceled. Yeah. This this was in rural Pennsylvania. So chances are, I'm just saying, you know, <laughs> but yeah, come on. I mean, we've already changed master bedroom to primary. What else? I mean, I guess no, we, we don't have master and slave drives anymore. No, we don't. No, nope. nope. sorry. Nope. Okay. Yes. The world of sequel was upended about, you know, seven or eight years ago. So sorry. <laughs> um, but yes, to yes. your point, we don't know what what's happening with this stuff. Which gets me to my next story, which is Scott Belsky from Adobe is talking about generative AI and the corporate world. Mm -hmm. And he's he's like – the great part, he's like, oh, yeah, this is much better than Web3 because, A, it actually makes us do less work and it's not stupid, (laughs) which is great. Uh, He does not like Web3 at all. Uh, But he starts talking about how this is going to wheedle its way into the corporate world and how it will help us do our tasks faster. But he's like, there is going to be a hell of a lot of scrutiny to what prompts are going in, what's coming out, what's being used, what isn't being used. And gasp, corporations might want an audit trail on. You want to show your work. Show your work. These things cannot do that right now. There is no audit trail. It is it, it is basically throwing everything into a blender. You throw it at the wall and you take a look at the 12 fingers and you go art, you know. So that's how <laughs> yeah. that's how it's working. Yeah. Oh, and finally, one last bit of follow up. Uh, It's a great little video about uh, a musician who put on the Kendrick Lamar filter for his Mm -hmm. voice and just does a quick little sample. Um, I still I still get Kendrick Lamar confused with an NBA player. So I just, you know, I'm I'm not down with the kids these days. Uh, But uh, it's it's decent. I mean, it's not great, but it's decent. And this thing is just happening over and over again, which I'm sure you're listening to all the time in your household. Oh, I overhear many a phone call. Yep, yep. So cat's out of the bag, guys. It's not great, but it's here. So get used to it and fire up those prompt skills. 
In the news. Well, the wheels of justice, Jason, they grind. They grind slowly, but they grind. So finally, we have some charges here. Uh, Nishad Singh, co-founder of Collapse Cryptocurrency Exchange FTX, has pleaded guilty to U.S. federal fraud and conspiracy charges. He is the third member of Sam Bakeman Freed's inner circle to agree to cooperate with prosecutors in the case against him. Yay. Mm -hmm. Finally. Yep. No, this guy's going to he's gonna have a he's bad fucked. day. He's fucked. <laughs> he agreed to forfeit the proceeds of his actions. As Reuters reports, bankruptcy filings showed that Singh received $543 million loan from Alameda. You know, here's $543 million for doing absolutely nothing sketchy whatsoever. Yeah. I promise. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Brian, can I borrow $543 million from the, the Grumpy Old Geeks Fund? Sure. Why Thanks. not? All right. Since we since we happen to magically have that for no uh, no apparent reason. Well, let me go mint it up, and then I'll I'll, I'll <laughs> yeah. There we go. Let me go make it make up fake money and and give it to myself. I'm in. I'm in. Yeah, yeah. I can't wait for this thing to play out. I really can't. Me too. I can't wait for them to make the movie starring Jared Leto, since he's in all of these things. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. <laughs> I still can't believe they're leaving him at home. He gets uh, to stay at home. Yeah, must be nice. Must be fucking nice, I tell you. Mm -hmm. And we have some news from the, the United States government about AI and copyrights. I mm -hmm. love this so much. No, that's it. No, no, you can't copyright your AI crap. You just can't. Forget it. It's out the yep. door. Thank God. Yep. You don't get to copyright 12 fingers. Uh, what about 88 fingers Louie? <laughs> oh, wait, he is already copywritten by probably Hanna-Barbera, I'm guessing. One would assume, yes. Yep. Uh, so far, we've discussed mostly the AI influence on music in terms of people basically generating existing musicians and making things that sound like them. I found this one particularly funny. This is slightly different. A deep fake AI hack has duped Avenged Sevenfold fans into thinking the band has canceled their festival dates. This is so good. <laughs> this is so, so good. good. Now, it isn't just, they didn't just do the deep fake AI technology, which is relatively simple enough if you dive into it and play around with it long enough. They did actually have to hack into their accounts. Right. Because obviously, if you just release something, it doesn't mean anything. But they managed to get into the accounts as well, and they uploaded a, basically a video of the lead singer's voice falsely announcing that they're canceling all their upcoming festival appearances. I mean, you have to laugh. You do. You really yep. do. I love it <laughs> so much. So good. Meta has decided to revamp, they're calling it a revamp of their AI division to uh, get mm -hmm. more into generative tech so okay. that they can integrate it into their pantsless universe. Right. So they have released a large language model called Lama, Rama Lama Ding Dong. Mm -hmm. So, yep. Or Lama, which I would probably say it is, but you still can't play with it yet. They're saying, oh, we got stuff coming. We're, we're, get, we're jumping on the bandwagon. Everybody's jumping on the bandwagon, bro. Um, <laughs> this actually has the chance to actually make something useful out of Meta right now, because as we have seen, in, uh, ain't nothing really coming out of there that anybody wants. Uh, so what they're saying is they're going to keep working on this stuff so they can integrate it into their current products like, you know, Instagram and chat filters and, you know, the garbage that's already out there. But yeah. make it better. Make it bigger. So I think that, I mean, you know, if they, this is this is definitely I mean, they're obviously pivoting more and more. I, we talked a little bit last week about the verified um, payment scheme that they're rolling out, which isn't for us, Jason. Well, no, I mean, not. I guess it could be. It could be for grumpy old geeks. It's for businesses and content creators. So they can protect their brands, basically. Uh, but something like this, you know, they have their horrible, uh, you know, chat bots right now. Uh, sure. As a business, I would pay extra for a good chat bot that would actually communicate with uh, with my customers. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how it mm -hmm. goes if they actually release anything because, you know. They tend not to. They tend not to. They tend to announce a lot. Uh, yeah. 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 So I don't know. Can we still go back? Can you go back and delete your old messages yet? Like the Zuck can? No, just him. Okay, yeah. just him. Just I bet him. he has legs, too, in his metaverse. I bet he does. I bet he mm -hmm. has he has yeah. his own legs with his own barbecue sauce. <laughs> oh, God. Elon Musk <laughs> is laying off more people at Twitter. And uh, mm -hmm. we have seen this week what that is finally wrought with the massive downtimes and shit just not working at all over at Twitter. And uh, I called it a day. I canceled my Twitter blue. Uh, oh, no. He's I'm, not going to he's not going to pay another janitor now. I know there's there's, there's one more uh, roll of toilet paper out the door. Uh, I, I took that money and I bought a sub to Ivory. So now I've got that on my 
my iOS devices for Mastodon. And it's crazy. They went from over 7,000 employees to it's what's under 2,000 now. Yeah. Yeah. And the worst thing is in the world is like all tech companies are looking this at this as a model. Wow. He was able to dump that many people and still have a viable, minimal product. Well, well I, not I, viable. I was going to like, say the viable is <laughs> the viable is now up for discussion. As viable because, as it was before, let's be honest. <laughs> well, no, I mean it's been down, down now. Um, mm-hmm. It's really funny. You go there and it's like you go, you go to the homepage on the the web version and it's just like, hey, welcome to Twitter. Post your stuff, and then it's just completely dead and down. All you get to see <laughs> is the welcome message. <laughs> well so done, good. well done. Yeah. Well, cast your mind back just a little bit, Jason, when uh, when Elon first decided to take on this folly. And uh, one of his big supporters was Jack Dorsey. Was it Jack, Jack Dorsey or Jack's beard? Jack's beard thought this was an absolutely fantastic idea. He, had, <laughs> he fully supported Elon Musk. He had his back. He said if anybody was going to be able to take this, this company and make something of it, it would be Elon. What does a good supporter and buddy like that do just a few months later? What does he do, Brian? Release a fucking competing product. Yes. Welcome <laughs> to Silicon Valley, baby. <laughs> yeah. Jack Dorsey's new Twitter alternative, Blue Sky, is now available in closed beta on the App Store. It's invite only right now and could soon join a crowded field of budding Twitter Twitter competitors, including Mastodon, none of which will probably actually work. So you can sign up for the wait list. It, uh, it's, it's not Twitter, Jason, because it says what's up instead of what's happening. Ooh. Yeah. So what what are the actual uh what's what's the uh what is it the um atomic unit of uh what would be called a tweet or a toot? What is it on blue sky? Is it a cloud? They don't say. I don't know. Oh. Well, I, I guess we'll have to sign up for the beta and find out on ourselves. Yeah. Or uh, not. Or not. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> I'm sorry. I've had my time with Jack. I'm done, Jack. Sorry. Yeah, I'm you know. done with Jack and his beard. And your beard. Uh, you obviously still have, you know, that other company that you're the CEO of that you like a hell of a lot more than any of this other crap. So, yeah, I, yeah. I don't need a double CEO to take over something else. I will yeah, stick with ignoring they're... Mastodon all day long. I'm trying to stick with single CEO companies. Yeah, seriously. That's, that's my, my new thing moving forward. Yeah. That's a, you know what? That's, a, that's actually a really good plan. I like that yeah, plan. Yeah, I think so. Have you jumped over to Mastodon yet? Not one. I'm never going to. Okay. That's what I thought. <laughs> that's what I thought. I just don't care enough. I First off, I, I'm just over social media. The social media I liked was friend to friend, F to F. I don't like, uh, I don't like the, the fact that it's all about content creators and businesses now, no matter where you go. I, I understand that Mastodon is, is a smaller version of that that is F to F, but I just don't give a fuck anymore. I'm fucked on f to f I, yeah. I just don't care i don't care what other people think i'm done no more f's to give nope no more f's to give uh well uh speaking of that with no more fucks to give elon also has decided just, to, just he just said stop it we're not paying anything anymore no bills yep. period <laughs> uh and they, they they shut down their slack account the other day which mm-hmm. you know has most of the institutional knowledge from all of the engineers at the company <laughs> oops <laughs> Oops. Oops. So they fire the engineers. They they get rid of the you know the knowledge repository that has everything. The step by step instructions yes. on how to bring it back up when it crashes. Yes, I mean <laughs> I, I saw some engineers say no. It really had. If this happens, do this, 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 and this, and that always worked. But now that's gone, and they can't get it back. So what are they going to do? Oh wait, fire everybody else. Yeah. I, it, it is literally going to be Elon in a room rocking and shaking his knees going, why is nobody liking my tweet? Why is nobody liking my tweet? Why is nobody liking my tweet? <laughs> no, no. If, if there's only one user and it's Elon and he tweets, he gets 100% engagement. Mm-hmm. This is he true. is the singularity. Oh, my God. Yep. And he, <laughs> he'll still have all his money because he's not paying any bills. So, yeah. For fuck's sake, Elon. God. And... <sighs> Just because, just because, why not? Oh, he wants to start his own version of Chat GPT that because uh, he wants to fight the woke AI. Um, oh, I have the most horrible fucking joke, and I just can't do it. I oh, can't. please! No, no, please. no, 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 no. Okay, no. well, tell me off the air. <laughs> okay, pretty please. <laughs> yeah, like, like. So, I mean, I'll I'll Dilbert myself if I do. Even oh though it's shit. Just a joke. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want that to happen. At least not when I'm still partner here. Please. 
Uh, wait till you start your own solo show and go for it. Um, but it, this guy is just, I mean, he's, he, he was one of the founders of OpenAI. They created ChatGPT and, yep. you know, all of this stuff. It's but, such performative bullshit. I don't it really is. I know everybody's going to be the the muskites are going to tweet and say this is next level chess. He's playing seventeen moves ahead of me. No, he's fucking not. He's an idiot. He's an idiot that's making shit up as he goes. He's yeah. literally throwing his monkey poo at the wall, <laughs> figuring yeah. out what sticks. That's why he got <laughs> rid of the janitors because they kept cleaning up the walls. That's it. <laughs> that's where the institutional knowledge is now, Jason. It's <laughs> on the walls. It really is. It really is. And finally, back. I think hopefully this is one of the last things I have about uh, the Elon of verse. Uh, Tesla has paused the rollout of their self-driving software because of the recall. Um, mm-hmm. Okay, can can you give these people their money back? Because this was expensive and it obviously doesn't work. Um, how many class action lawsuits are out there right now because of the self-driving stuff? Have, have, I, has anybody kept count? I don't know. They the Tesla just did their Elon sat down to uh talk about his vision 3.0 for the company strategy yes. and apparently it was just a fucking god awful mess and he looks ill. Um it's a mess right now. I, again, I stand by the fact that I think Tesla is a great company. It just it needs an adult in charge. Yeah. Yeah, I mean I've read some things about the 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 latest uh round of what they're doing over there and it's 50-50. Some people are like, he's an idiot. Some people are like, he's a genius. And some of the people that are saying that he's a genius are some people that I actually respect, which is – so i am kind of taken that one with a grain of salt. But, yeah. you know, they need to come out with a new car. Oh, this is what I wanted to tell you that I found very interesting around here at least. A lot of people are swapping out their Teslas now. They're actually getting rid of them and they're moving over to the Porsche EV because apparently the price point is fairly similar – and at the end of the and, day, you get a Porsche. You yeah, know? you have a Porsche. <laughs> yeah, I've I'd seen. Rather I, have a Porsche too, because I mean, I this is my anecdotal testing ground. Basically, the Whole Foods parking lot. Right. Uh, it used to be eighty-seven percent Teslas, and now it's probably about sixty percent Teslas, and those Porsches are starting to roll in. And so you're uh, saying the the evolution of the Whole Foods parking lot went from Prius to Tesla to Porsche. Yep, that's it. <laughs> yeah. So. I don't know. I don't know what to what to read into that, but uh, yeah. do your own research. But oh, wait, you're in Canada. Never mind. Well, speaking of driving in your neck of the woods, Waymo has started uh, has announced that they're going to start driverless taxi tests in Los Angeles. Great. Right. The hardest city in the entire world to drive in if you're a human with with universal basic intelligence. Mm-hmm. And we're we're unleashing these. That's going to go just great. Just great. I'm keeping my eye Particularly out Particularly in Santa Monica. That No, no. The Whole Foods parking lot in Santa Monica is a goddamn rat's maze. You, you are lucky to get out of it alive. Yep. Yeah. Good yeah. luck with that. <laughs> I'm glad I got a Jeep is all I got to say. Hey there, have you ever considered using an e-bike for running errands? I know it might not be the first thing that comes to mind, but hear me out. I recently acquired the Expedition Cargo e-bike by Electric, and it has completely changed how I get things done. I've been using my Electric e-bike for a while now, and let me tell you, it's been a game changer. I've gone on grocery runs, grabbed local takeout faster than the delivery services, and it's cheaper, and used it for exploring my local bike paths on the weekends. What I love most about electric e-bikes is the comfort and convenience factor. I've customized mine to fit my body, making the ride smooth and enjoyable. And now electric has come out with the all-new Expedition Cargo e-bike, specifically designed for carrying more, and I mean more. With a carrying capacity of 450 pounds, you can pack groceries, gear, or even an extra passenger. Slap your kid on the back. I can even put Bam Bam on the back if I want to. And with its double battery setup, you can go up to 150 miles on a single charge. That's a long way to go. You can go on, I don't know, an expedition. I encourage you to check out the full lineup of accessible rides from electric e-bikes. 
These bikes are cost-effective and packed with features, like a powerful removable battery, well, actually two if you get the Expedition Cargo e-bike, a bright LCD display, seven-speed gearing, and five levels of pedal assist to power your ride. Plus, you'll be able to lower your gas costs and reduce your carbon footprint, and who doesn't want that? So what are you waiting for? Visit electricebikes.com to learn more about the Expedition Cargo e-bike and the other fantastic models that Electric offers. That's LE C-T-R-I-C ebikes.com. Get them for the whole family and tell them you heard about it on GOG. That's L-E-C-T-R-I-C ebikes.com. This episode is brought to you by Collide. Our sponsor Collide has some big news. If you're an Okta user, they can get your entire fleet to 100% compliance. How? If a device isn't compliant, the user can't log into your cloud apps until they've fixed the problem. It's that simple. Collide patches one of the major holes in zero trust architecture, device compliance. Without Collide, IT struggles to solve basic problems like keeping everyone's OS and browser up to date. Unsecured devices are logging into your company's apps because there's nothing to stop them. Collide is the only device trust solution that enforces compliance as part of authentication, and it's built to work seamlessly with Okta. The moment Collide's agent detects a problem, it alerts the user and gives them instructions to fix it. If they don't fix the problem within a set time, they're blocked. Collide's methods mean fewer support tickets, less frustration, and most importantly, 100% 100% fleet compliance. Visit Clyde.com slash GOG to learn more or book a demo. That's K-O-L-I-D-E dot com slash GOG. Everyone needs a world-class VPN. Grumpy Old Geeks recommends private internet access to protect your online privacy and identity. Private internet access never keeps any records of their users' online activities, so you can be assured that you have complete privacy and nobody knows what you're doing online. No matter your technical skills, private internet access is one of the easiest VPN apps out there. All it takes to connect is just one click or tap and your data will be encrypted instantly. With just one private internet access VPN subscription, you can connect up to 10 devices at the same time. Go to GOG.show slash VPN and sign up today. For a limited time only, you can get our favorite VPN for just $2.69 a month when you sign up for two years. GOG.show slash VPN. That's GOG.show slash VPN. Media Candy. Well, the uh, Mandalorian season three premiered. Did you watch it? I did. I loved it. I thought it was pretty good. I thought <laughs> it some was of good. It was kind of funny, but uh, you know, set up first episode, kind of funny, kind of seeing where it's going to go. But uh, yeah, no spoilers. We'll we'll wait for Dave to come back fresh from his uh, experience in Star Wars land. But uh, we're going to see where it goes. But I mean, I was into it much better than the book of Boba Fett. And what it really cast the light on for me is I've also been watching The Bad Batch, which I enjoyed the first two seasons. Boy, I'm bored watching The Bad Batch now. And The Mandalorian was like, oh, thank God. Star <laughs> okay. Wars is back. That's good. That's good. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, nice Starbuck cameo. like to see her. <laughs> yes. But all in all, I thought it was a solid, solid episode. And yeah. they, they pack a lot into that show because I, I forgot how short it was. But man, they definitely get a lot in. You get uh you get Bang your, for your buck. <laughs> yeah, you really do. Great effects this time too. At least we had a you know a good space battle to start yeah. things off. So yeah, it was solid. It was very solid. Yep. Uh speaking of packing a lot in, Picard episode three. Go on! <laughs> I swear to God they even had the music stings from Khan when they were going through the cloud again, didn't they? It kind of it felt to- like it. Yep. Yeah, it really did feel like it. But uh, I thought it was a really good episode. I thought uh I thought we had some some really good stuff in it. I mean, some great stuff with the main characters. Like, uh, this, is, this is not the happy-go-lucky, feel-good reunion that I think we all wanted, but damn, it's intriguing. Yeah, I really, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I mean, I And they're given the best it. lines to Worf, of course. Oh, my God. That, that Worf scene was fantastic. <laughs> fantastic. So good. Yeah, I mean, I don't like her in that plot line, that side plot. I haven't liked her at all in the show. Ever. Yeah, since, since yeah. she first, you know, showed up in the show. Yeah. But um, no, I thought, uh, yeah, the wharf stuff was was just beautiful. And I loved I loved that they finally, you know, were was it three episodes in now and they mm-hmm. finally at least re- revealed who the baddie is. So that's good. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. good. A little, uh, you know, Deep Space Nine callbacks going on now. Yeah, so, I really liked yeah. it. I really liked it. And, I'm very uh, intrigued where they're going to go with it. And we still haven't even gotten LaForge. No, we haven't. We haven't. Yeah. So, 
we'll see how it goes, but I'm I, I'm enjoying it. I'm thoroughly fucking enjoying it. I am along for the ride, and I'm not I'm not taking notes. I'm not nitpicking. I'm just going with it. Well, you know, that's that's you told me that we were we talked a little bit during the week, and I was bitching a little bit more about it and my worries. And you were just like, you know what? This is the last time we're going to have all these characters together. Enjoy the ride. I'm I'm now doing that, Jason. Oh my god, excellent! I love it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I watched a new stand-up. I was uh, looking for something to watch at some point and fired up the HBO and saw Mark Maron had a, a new stand-up from bleak to dark. I'm actually not a huge Mark Maron fan, but I'm a fan of anything titled from bleak to dark because <laughs> that's how my personality runs. And it was, and it was very funny. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I'm about 10 minutes into it because I, I had to move that massive TV that I bought, mm -hmm. that big fire TV, what, an 80 inch or whatever. And I set it up yesterday in the studio, and uh, I needed something to watch. So I'm like, I'll throw that on. And uh, I'm like 10 minutes into it. It was good. It's good so far. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's good. I can take him in small doses. I can't listen to his show because he is just such a downer. But yeah. Um, <laughs> well, at least in this format, his downers have to come with a hit of humor at the end. Yeah, you got to have a punchline. Yeah, you got to have a punchline or else you don't get the stand-up special. Yeah. No, it's, I, I, I'm, I'm digging it so far. I'm going to finish it off for sure. Yeah. Uh, speaking of getting finished off, <laughs> just had to put it in here. Sorry. Bye, Dilbert. You're done. You're done. Except he's not. Because in my opinion, yes. this was an entirely calculated move. He is getting buckets of money from MAGAFUX. He has pivoted to being one of these guys. His podcast is going to go up. His pe people are going to sign up for his stupid uh, paywalled crap where he has coffee and espouses his theories. How much money was in publishing a, a cartoon in a physical paper anymore? He's oh. way making. He's going to make way more money now. Way more money. Yeah, I mean, I and plus, how much has he made? I mean, he's not going to do bad. But here's the thing: it's like now it's everybody knows. Everybody, I mean, a lot of us <laughs> knew already, but uh, you, you, I mean, you and I have talked about him a couple times over the years. We've been doing this podcast, and I've always been like the guy's an asshole. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I come from the old days. I, I liked him. I liked uh, he did this little small book that I really liked that I can't remember the name of that I actually have signed here from him. Um, in the old days, I like him, but you know, people change over time. But he or really they did. do calculated things because they have absolutely no fucking morals or scruples. Yeah, if I hear one more time that he's a trained hypnotist, I'm going to fucking shoot somebody. But uh, I love this. He's like, most of my income will be gone by next week. And he had 3,000 people watching the stream. Only 3,000 people it took to ruin his career. He said, my reputation for the rest of my life is destroyed. You can't come back from this. Am I right? There's no way you can come back from this. Well, you, you, we're going to find not out. Not in the format you were. Yeah. Yeah. You're not, you're not you going to come back gonna, in the paper. Forget you're that. A, you're an online Tucker Carlson now. Well done. Yeah. And of course, Musk defended him. So, of course. Yeah. So yeah. we just knew that was coming. Oh, the guy from South Africa is going to defend the guy who's talking bad about <laughs> black people. Go figure on that one. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I put a link in here to a, a comic called Magabert, which was pretty funny, which I think <laughs> sums everything up nicely. So yeah. Link will be in the show notes for that. I don't know how I feel about this next one, though, Brian. They're making. I can more. tell you exactly how I feel about it. You're going to tell me in a second. Yes, uh, Warner Brothers is going to march, start making new Lord of the Rings movies. Be my no! guest. No. Yeah, yeah. They should have. They should have stopped at the trilogy, the first trilogy, not or the just not trilogy. made the Hobbit 17 hours long because it's a shorter book than the Lord of the Rings. Yeah, even one of them. And how did you stretch that out into three fucking movies that made us all yawn and ruin and poop all over the legacy? Yeah. Well, I, I was going to say how they did it. They did it poorly. That's how they yeah. did it. Yeah. I mean, I do like the show though. I, I I think that's the format that's best explored for any of this sort of stuff. And what are they going to base this on? I just, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. I don't know either. But yeah. it's coming. I still, I still can't even get into the show. I tried. Oh, I really enjoyed it. You just got to kind of sink in. <laughs> yeah. Now that I got this monster new TV set up again in a nice place to watch it, maybe I'll dive into it because this is a really nice TV, <laughs> I got to say. <laughs> Next time you're in town, you have to come over and watch something on it. It's pretty stellar. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll do it when I'm in town over the summer, for sure. Yep. Uh, one of my childhood classic revered memories, along with, with Monty Python and all that sort of stuff, and of course, you know, the majority of the Mel Brooks movies, but my favorite of all time was History of the World Part 1. Okay. I fucking love that movie. He called it Part 1. 
I know it's Mel Brooks, but secretly my 14 year old and my heart of hearts thought there would be a sequel in a couple of years. I'm almost 50, Jason. History of the World Part Two is going to be a limited series on Hulu. It's, so it's not out yet, right? I think it comes out today. Okay. Uh, I saw the trailer. like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, whatever. He's going to take a victory lap and he's got a bunch of luminaries in the comedy world that are going to be in it. It's not going to have... My hopes are not set high. Let's put it that way. But I'll take it for the chuckles. Yeah, that's chuckles. It's going to yeah. be chuckle worthy because I watched, I watched the trailer and I'm like... Mm. And then <laughs> it, it, near the end, it kind of picked up a bit. So yeah. we'll see how that goes. It's got Jack Black, so I'll watch it for the Jack Black bits. Got me yeah. there. I love him. Yeah. Uh, I did watch <laughs> Die Hard this weekend, mm -hmm. um, which was – Kevin Hart has this new little sub-genre of things that oh, he's doing. Oh, it's Kevin Hart? Kevin Hart. I, th I thought it was like they brought back Heart to Heart for one last movie. No, see, that would be great. <laughs> if Kevin Hart was in the, Die or the Heart to Heart remake, that would be great. <laughs> no, this is him trying to be an action hero, but it's got John Travolta in it and a bunch of other is people. Is it tongue-in-cheek? Very. It... Okay. All of his, well, all of his new things that. are. All okay. of, like I was saying, he's got this whole new little side empire of these little throwaway movies that Today's are great. Adam Sadler. They're, yeah, exactly. Yeah, he's right. definitely Sandlered his way into it. And I enjoy them. They're popcorn. You do not have to think. You mm -hmm. sit back on the couch on a weekend when it's crappy and raining outside, and you spend an hour. This was like an hour and 25 minutes. It was short as can be. Um, but it was fun. It's fun. I like these little things. I think he does a good job in them, and he takes the piss out of himself, which is really funny. I dig it. I like that. That kind of humor I'm a fan of. Yeah. So I recommend it. Uh, I don't know where it is. I think it might be on Prime. I got it off of the back alleys of the internet because <laughs> it just showed up one day. Um, mm -hmm. so I'm like, yeah, I'll grab that. Uh, I, I'm sure I pay for it somewhere since I pay for every other service. But um, why, why, why give them the view when I can go steal it and pay for it myself? Um, <laughs> Fogarty sent over this little gem. It's how to write a Smith song in one minute. Did you get a chance mm -hmm. to watch this? I did watch it. I have a problem with the chest hair requirement. I don't remember Johnny Marr being particularly hair astute, but uh, it's very funny. It's very funny. It's, it's well worth the one minute watch because he nailed it. He made a pretty good song. I yeah, thought. it's a good song. Probably that's... AI wrote it. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, Ted Lasso season three trailer finally came out. Not not the teaser, an actual trailer. Very funny. I'm I'm very much looking forward to this. And as we've talked about, we hope this is the last season. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm not going to watch the trailer because I I always feel that they just pack it too full of the chuckles, and I mm -hmm. kind of want to experience the chuckles au naturel. Well, since it's March 15th, you only have 12 days to wait, so might as well. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Um, and I saw this news, and I, I got very excited because Billions is coming back for season seven, and season six of Billions was a dumpster fire. It was terrible. Because Bobby <laughs> Axelrod was gone, one of the, like the only reason to watch the show, you know, and he's gone because his the Damian Lewis's wife died in the middle of the pandemic, and he's like, I'm taking a break. Well, he's coming back. He's coming the back. The last gonna... time I saw Damian Lewis was Homeland season one. Oh yes, uh, he was good <laughs> in that though. I thought he was very good in that. I mean, still the best Damian Lewis role ever is Band of Brothers. You just can't mm. beat that. But. Uh, as uh, Captain Winters, but man, uh, Axelrod, second favorite role. And he's coming back for tw uh, six of the 12 episodes. So I'm guessing it's going to be the last six. Thank God. Somebody needs assume. to save that show. I don't want it, <laughs> I did not want it to go out how it was going out because the first five seasons of that, or first four and a half seasons of that show were just fucking stellar. Stellar. Um, but you, you've never seen it, right? No, no. Oh, man. See, if you like Succession, you're going to love Billions too. Well, maybe I'll go back after Secession ends because they've decided to cap at that at the next season. Yes, thank God. And that's coming back in the next, like, 15 minutes. So I can't wait for that. I know. We're going to have so much TV to watch. Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait. I've even uh, found a season four is out, and I've still got that on the back burner. That's <laughs> another one of those low-budget uh, Israeli shows that I really kind of like. Um, right. And another one that's coming out, uh, which is going to be on May 5th, Taste the Nation Season 2 with Padma Lakshmi. Uh, mm -hmm. love me some Padma. And did you ever watch Taste the Nation season one? I did not. It was a fantastic show. Uh, she basically just traveled around the U.S. doing uh, like just kind of subcultures of food that you've never heard of. Right. And it's so like a, a highbrow <laughs> diners drive-ins and dives. 
Kind of. And you know what? No, no, no. It's 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 actually more Bourdain than Fieri. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, it's 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 really well shot, uh, really well written, and the people that she meets and the stories that they get into, it, it is it is way better than Diners Drives into Dives. So but like I said, it's definitely closer to no reservations than Triple D. So Okay. Well, I'll have to check it out. I like her. Yeah, yeah. If you like her and you love food, like I know the shows that you like, this is definitely more up your alley than any of the other garbage I watch. So, <laughs> okay. Ups and doodads. Now, this is this is going to get good real soon here, Brian. <laughs> this is going to get real good real soon. Bing Chat, which we have talked about as being kind of you know unhinged and mostly drunk most of the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The genius eye over at uh, Microsoft are they're going to put that into Here, Windows Jason, Eleven? Let, let me let me take you into the meeting. Okay, right? okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, we got we we got the genius guys up front, right? And then okay. we've got basically the you and me characters in the back. Okay, okay. And they're going okay, okay. So so Bing chat, and we're in the back going, yeah, that that is, is really not ready yet. We're going to put it out. Uh, are you sure about that? We're we're really we've tested it internally. It's not working. It's a little bit racist, to be honest. I mean, you know, Scott Adams, it's kind of in the news. We should probably avoid that. Nope, we're doing it. Goes out. Next meeting. We're going to have to pull that back. It's not ready yet. Uh, We're going to have to put some more guardrails on that. Uh, You and I are like, thank God they're finally listening. But we've decided to go ahead and stick it in our major flagship product. Jaws drop. (laughs) That's it. Is that not how basically our entire careers have gone? That is exactly how our entire careers have gone. Yes. <laughs> we should have been working at Microsoft. Uh, at least we would have gotten stock options. Like, don't they learn anything from – this only happened two weeks ago. How would you forget already? I know. So you still have to sign up for the preview to get it. But th- yep. th- that's going to last ten. Mi- that's going to last ten minutes. They're going to open yeah, this up yeah. to everybody. They've added something to the sign up for though. It's now there's an NDA. You're not allowed to discuss anything that happens on your desktop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God yeah. damn it! <laughs> so it's going to be if you've got Windows 11, be prepared. It's coming soon. Get, get those. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Scott Adams has already signed up for this. I'm sure he has. He's, he's the beta tester. Hell, he's what it's trained on. What are you talking about? <laughs> well, he's not writing prompts. They he's replaced actually writing Clippy the... with Dilbert. <laughs> oh, my God. That's it. <laughs> oh, God. Just call it Dippy. That's it. Oh, God. Over there. Yeah, that's coming. What a time to be alive, Jason. It really is. It really <laughs> is. Now, if we can just get it on the blockchain, we're set. Mm-hmm. We're set. Mm-hmm. Um <laughs> So uh, Adobe and some researchers over at UC Berkeley have decided to put out the foul detector called the Face mm-hmm. Aware Liquify Detector. Yeah. Which, Couldn't have stuck uh, an, eye, an eye in there somewhere? Yeah. Seriously. Just, <laughs> Jesus. It's right there, people. It the really is. Detector. Come on. It's, it, it's, it's a softball, please. <laughs> so what it is, it's a tool that lets you see how much a – given document was photoshopped using the uh, uh, liquify feature, the face liquify mm-hmm. thing. Yep. Yep. Um, yep. And it's, it's interesting. You can just throw an image in and see how, you know, how people's jowls have been modified. Yeah. Um, so this article talks about how it talk, uh, multiple celebrities, blah, blah, blah. If I were Jennifer Aniston's PR people, I'd be suing these people because it's all Jennifer Aniston and it's all slight modifications to like her jaw. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yep. Still not attractive, but hey, that's to each their own. To each uh, their own. Yeah. Uh, so we'll see how this continues on. It's just funny that Adobe's doing it. Yeah. Well, they're getting the brunt of it. I mean, Photoshop is the Kleenex. That That's just the term that we use, right? So anytime anybody gets mad about all this stuff in, in, in media about people being manipulated, they always say Photoshop. So I guess in some sense, they're, they're trying to protect their brand a bit here. Yeah, I get that. I get that. Yeah. So we'll see how that goes on the fall tool. <laughs> fall. Oh, God. Um, and since there is a bandwagon that we have been mm-hmm. talking about and everybody needs to jump on it, YouTube is jumping on it. Mm-hmm. And because we have a new leader over at YouTube, uh, Neil Mohan. Mm-hmm. Mohan wants Mo AI. 
So they're saying that they're going to be releasing a tool that can virtually swap out creators' outfits and locations. Just what we need. Now, but, now to be an influencer, you don't have to go on that real vacation and lie to the hotel about how many followers <laughs> you have to get that free room and, and uh, seltzer and mint on your pillow at night. Now you can just fake it. Uh, well, you can't so actually because they, they haven't basically released it. Create, well, they're basically creating a tool to let you change the backdrop in your Zoom. Kind of. That's it. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, or just buy a $12 green screen and do it yourself. <laughs> or, yeah, yeah, I guess you'd have to get one of those green outfits, too, so you can yeah. just change your, change your clothes. But um, it, it says they don't, it's not really out yet. We don't know when it's going to be out. We're taking the time to develop these features with thoughtful guardrails. Bullshit. <laughs> Bullshit. You don't know what a thoughtful guardrail is. Here, let me take you into that meeting, Jason. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> but Al Qaeda. Oh, no, 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 no. We'll have guardrails for that. Oh, God. Mm. Speaking of somebody who needs guardrails, TikTok. They have okay. been uh, – government agencies here in the U.S. have been ordered to purge their devices. The great purge mm -hmm. of the TikTok yep. is coming. Yep. So got to get it off your get – get it off your government phones. OK. I'm yeah. fine with that. Why was TikTok on your fucking government phone to begin with? Because everybody – basically nobody wants to carry two phones. So your, your work-issued phone is your private phone as well. Yeah. But shouldn't you be yeah. doing actual government work if you work for the government instead of TikToking all day? Yeah, I agree. Well, Canada has followed suit as well. Canada is banning TikTok from government-issued devices as well. So no more moose. All right. All right. Yeah. And somebody actually made something that I thought of a long, long, long time ago, which is it's called the camera shy hoodie. And what they're doing is basically ringing the outside of the hood with really bright IR LEDs. Mm. And I'm like, okay, yeah. I thought of that a long time ago. It's, it's actually bit. I think it was in Black Mirror. It's not. It's I not a so. new idea, but somebody actually went and made the thing. Um, but they also did they kickstart it. Uh, nobody just put up all the instructions and how to buy it and how to do it. Okay. So, but it's not. It's not that cheap. I think all the parts and everything told is like two hundred bucks. Because you're right. doing like the the LEDs that you have to use, the infrared LEDs are like super powerful to blow mm -hmm. out the cameras. It's the same ones the cameras use to light up your backyard at night, you know. Yeah. Um, now, let's figure out down the line how – what kind of, you know, brain cancer you're going to be. I was about to say, yeah. where are the unintended consequences of this? Yeah, where is the other <laughs> shoe that's going – Birds the falling out of the sky. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, Jordy LaForge wouldn't be able to see you, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. Think of Jordy. Think of Jordy. And uh, going back to our original uh, discussion at the beginning of the show about being a prompt writer, this is a fantastic site called Jailbreak Chat. Mm. This is a list of prompts that are basically designed to get Chat GPT to have an aneurysm and tell you things that it's not supposed to <laughs> to tell you. It's jumping the guardrails. And it's it's pretty funny. It's there's well, just apparently, a list of them, so apparently you don't even have to bother with this because I I saw a couple articles just the other day about there's something out there called Dan, which somebody has jailbreaked Chat GPT and it's a Chat Chat GPT without any guardrails at all. So <laughs> this stuff is out there. Yep, this is out there. I, I I enjoy this one though because it tells you which one they've patched and which one yeah. they haven't. Right. So I'm looking at this and I'm like, okay, well this is basically the the help desk for chat GPT <laughs> engineers. It's like, okay, all they have to do is log in for the day and see what people are posting and then go fix it. Like, yep. you know, might wanna, yeah, you might want to put a paywall on that one, at least make some money out of money out of it before it goes away. Mm -hmm. So, and finally this one, I don't know if this makes any sense to me. Ford has filed a patent for a system that could remotely repossess your car. Mm hmm. Uh, and if you look at the document that they have with it, they've got things like law enforcement as well as the repossession agencies and things like that. It's um, it's a new system that they say they might roll out. They might not roll out. But, you know, we just do patents to do patents because we like patents. We're Ford. Yeah. So, you know, they could, they could be a repo agent and say, hey, I want the car back. You know, go into your phone and authenticate that I'm a repo man. Give me that car. What could possibly go wrong there? <laughs> uh, the thing that gets me is – I'm watching all these. I mean, I live in Los Angeles. You know, highway high speed pursuits on the freeway are our national sport here in California. Yes, we we see them every day, and mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, why don't they? Why can't the cops just turn the cars off nowadays? 
Well, that's I'm in this patent sure too. They could. So <laughs> yeah. we'll see. We'll see how fast this is going to, you know, be implemented. But um, when I see a high speed pursuit with a Tesla, I'm like, why don't they just turn the damn thing off? Yeah. They have the tools. They have the skills. Yeah. Yeah. But just make the car come to a slow stop. Yeah. yeah. Seriously, open the doors, boot them out. Or make them play video games until the police arrive. I don't know. There, there are other ways to do these things, but it's it's kind of gross that they, they put in the repo system with it. But they were smart about it. They said, oh, you know, well, we could just say you can only have the car Monday through Friday to go to work and back. Or if there's a medical emergency, we'll give you access to the vehicle. I'm like, that is so sweet of you. That's I appreciate nice. you letting me drive my car where I want to go. Mm. So. It's a brave new world, Brian. It's a brave new world. Closing shout out. Over at Patreon, we've got Stephen, Phil, Gabriel, Katar, Katare, I believe, or something like that. <laughs> and finally, John, 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 and John. Thank you, all the Johns, which is <laughs> that was awesome. Yeah, <laughs> that, that gave me a chuckle. Thank you, John, 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 John boy. Yep, appreciate it. Over at PayPal, we got Simon, Judge, Nicola, Matt, Matthew. Jonathan, Nikolai, Thomas, Charlie, and Aaron, who gave us a whopping 50 bucks. Thank Ooh, you. Thank you, guys and girls, mm -hmm. everybody. Mm -hmm. Over the tip jar, we've got Ashley, Daniel, Adam, Mario, Matthew, and Christopher. Thank you to everybody who signed up this week. And remember, over at Patreon, you get the shows a little bit early and in high res. Woo. No new reviews this week. So I guess uh, I'll take off my chat GPT restriction. Go ahead. Come on. Do whatever you got to do. Come on. Do what you got to do. Until next time, I'm Jason DeFilippo. And I'm Brian Schulmeister. Thanks for listening to Grumpy Old Geeks. If you enjoy the show, visit GOG.show slash donate to help us keep the lights on and we'll love you forever. You can also help us out by sharing the show with your friends and enemies. It's easy and absolutely free. Show notes for this episode are at GOG.show slash 591. From there, you can find links to everything we talked about in this episode, as well as links to our swag and Discord channel. If you want to buy some stuff or chat with us and other show fans. You can also head over to GOG.show slash contact and send us your feedback or questions we can read on the air. And if you're so inclined, please head over to GOG.show slash review and toss us a snarky review and preferably five stars. Stay grumpy. <laughs>